for anyone that's watching this short video, what it shows is some work I'm doing uh, ahead of building my next panel for my sim pit, and that sim pit will be based on DCS, Digital Combat Simulator, the A10C, and the panel which I'm looking at now is the landing gear panel. Uh, an interesting panel comprised of sort of a mixture of different things. Um, and in, in producing that panel, I'm doing some prototyping today to just be sure that I can get a couple of key parts to work. So the, the bits I'm looking at today um, are the status of the light here. So in this section here, when the wheels are engaged, it will illuminate for the left, front and right wheels. And the landing gear handle here will illuminate red when the landing gear is in transit. So that's the first thing I'm looking at is can I use DCS BIOS which is a fantastic program that's been developed and a, a big shout out to the uh, the developers of that I believe he's, the gentleman's name is Ian so some fantastic work that he has done to kindly produce this for everyone and uh, the collaboration he did with uh, John Wall who worked on the construction of panels and between the two they collaborated to make sure this all works well. They've produced some very good documentation that I'd suggest you read through thoroughly. Um, and in using all that information, um, I'm now looking to see if I can uh, get the, the status of the, um, the landing gear to show. And also this gauge here, so the position of the flaps in degrees across the wings and I've got an Adreno that I'm doing some work for that to prototype and see if I can get it to, to work. So if we take um, the first part, which is the status of the, the, the undercarriage, I'm using an Adreno copy board here. And what is going to sit on that, or what is sitting on that Adreno board, is this sketch. So this is... Um, the sketch which has items taken from the reference documentation that the DCS BIOS producers have put together and you can see that there are four LEDs which are going to run off pins 12, 8, 7 and 4 so in this case pin 12 is the left wheel pin 8 is the front middle wheel pin 7 is the right wheel and pin 4 will be the uh, red light that illuminates in the landing gear handle. So this this has been put together, uploaded onto the Adreno, and then as the simulation runs, it outputs a Lua code and streams it via this uh, piece of software to the port, that's a COM number, that the Adreno sits on, and then when it reaches uh, the Adreno here, the sketch is sitting on there, which is the code that tells it exactly what to do, which in this case is the status of uh, the landing gear. So if we take these here, so we did say that uh, pin 12, which is this one here, uh, that will be the left uh, wheel. Then we go on, and if we, if we just follow the movement of, of that to the breadboard, so uh, that is output as a positive and goes into it here. That enters into the LED. And as it comes out of the LED, it comes over and passes through a resistor, which, as the DCS documentation suggests, a quarter watt, 220 ohms. And that then is passed to ground, which goes back into the ground pin of the Adreno. And then that's repeated for number 8, which is the middle wheel. And again, that comes over, passes through the LED, through a resistor, through ground. Uh, the right wheel which is pin 8 again that comes over here through the LED out the other side through the resistor and in through ground and finally exactly the same for the landing gear handle which is on pin 4 that runs through here through the LED passes over here and uh, goes through a resistor and through ground so having a look at the simulation now if I can get both of them in, if we lower the undercarriage, you can see it's in transit via the red light that's illuminated, 
and you can see that the wheels are showing as engaged and that matches exactly what's happening on the screen so if we disengage it you can see that it mirrors exactly what's happening in the simulation too so let's just have a look a little bit closer up Smash him. Okay, so that's looking really good. Now, in terms of the, the first gauge I'm going to be working on here, um, the sketch that I've used is this one here. It's one item of code taken from the reference documentation, which is a servo output one here, which tells it it's on pin 9. So if we have a look over here, this is the other Adreno. This is an original Adreno that I'm using here and that is pin 9 that is simply telling the sketch is simply indicating uh, which pin it will run off and there are a couple of values that you'll see here that operate the uh, show the the range that the servo will operate within and i've altered those values to get the range of movement to coincide with what you're seeing on the actual gauge on screen so that's just a little bit of trial and error of trying different figures. Now, again, this is uploaded onto the Adreno. There, it's the Adreno sits on a different com, uh, a different port, um, and this is running to stream to that port. So again, it's the same principle. The, the data is streamed to the Adreno. There's a sketch that sits on there with code, so it tells it what to do, which in this case is to make it uh, mirror the status of the the flaps gauge. Now with this here, um, whereas these LEDs are drawing their power from the actual Adreno board, a servo, the demands are greater and for that reason I have, um, I'm running it off the mains, um, I've got a, a, a high powered uh, mains adapter which can potentially run up to 10 servos, hence the reason that I've had it broken out here. And if you look off the positive, that runs through into the positive of the servo. And the negative, the ground, that runs in to the servo as well. The signal wire comes into pin 9 that we mentioned. But what's really important, and this was something that I had to read about to overcome, is that there has to be a common ground and the common ground that's been put in runs from the ground of the Adreno into the ground of the mains. Um, and without that, the challenge that you will have will just be that the servo will just jitter and it will look like it's stuck. Um, and it is just simply, it has to have that common ground to, to function properly. So when we have a look now um, and activate the flaps, if we put that in view... you can see that it is moving pretty much in line with what's happening on screen. Now the servo I'm using here is a high-tech HS311 which uh, is a pretty decent piece of kit and there we have it so um, for anyone that watched this, I hope that it's of some use if you're looking to build your own. Um, thanks again to the developers of DCS Bias. Uh, absolutely fantastic uh, software here. And I really look forward now to um, building that landing gear panel and uh, getting that into the sim pit. Thanks for watching.